visit up on the Chicago location. Just waiting for my ride so I can head over to the shop. It's a beautiful day out of Chicago, so I'm going to try to uh, enjoy some Chicago, but got to take care of some things first. Um, the biggest thing on tap today is uh, we're going to be giving one of the employees a raise. Um, we're also going to be asking more responsibilities of him. Um, there's a chance that he'll be doing cash drops, which would be a new, uh, it would be new to us. Um, so far, I've done all the cash drops, and then here in Chicago, uh, my Chicago business partner does the cash drops here. Um, I've never had an employee do cash drops. With technology now, it's super easy to verify cash deposits because you um, can literally just look at the deposit and match it up with the cash for any time period thanks to um, the square point of sale system. Uh, the only other thing we're really going to talk about today is Illinois passed a $15 minimum wage, so we have to have that conversation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the $15 minimum wage um, a little later on, but I uh, just wanted to get a quick little uh, blurb out there for the video. And, uh, and next, uh, I'll be at the store, and we could talk a little bit more about $15 minimum wage and the implications that uh, it has on small business. Real quick, I didn't get to do a video today at all because I was actually super busy at the store. My Uber driver is pulling in as we speak, so uh, I didn't get to do a walkthrough. I didn't get to talk about some of the things that I wanted to talk about, but um, I'm heading to O'Hare right now. I did get some things done. I'm going to do something about $15 minimum wage soon because it did come up uh, when um, I was looking at a location in Baltimore. Um, but here in Chicago, this is a pretty old school shop. It's been around for a long time. Um, I did some videos around the time when I first bought it. Uh, it does really well. It's very established. Um, it's got a smaller staff. Labor costs are not that much here. Um, I'm running two managers rather than uh, like a five-man staff with three part-timers. Um, and a full-timer and a operations manager. Um, that being said, had some good conversations today with some of my vendors. Also talking to Groupon. Um, but this is my Uber driver right there. He's, he's stalking me behind me. So I got to get going. And I'll do a video later. All right, bye. Hey guys, uh, my flight got delayed, so I won't be getting back into Baltimore until about 1, 2 in the morning at this point. So I have a little bit of time to make a quick video. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to do. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Baltimore location that I was going through. Um, talk a little bit about the $15 minimum wage and kind of the implications of that. Um, honest to God, I hadn't really thought very much about it. Um, a lot of my employees already are making over $15 an hour, so it's never really been a concern before. Um, but what happened with this store is, this is what I would call a scratch store. Um, now I'm going to have to do a video that explains all my different stores and how they came into existence to kind of give context as to um, what the stores did when I took them over. But uh, this Baltimore location would have been a true scratch store. It's an empty Jiffy Lube. Uh, there hasn't been a business in it for years, so it essentially would have been a situation where it came in and did um, a complete overhaul of the location, put new staff in, and, um, and it would have been a huge risk. And, you know, the $15 minimum wage was very scary at that point because this was not a location that... Um, I would have been interested in being in on a daily basis. So I, um, I pulled the plug on it uh, temporarily. If I get a better feel for the location, then I might go ahead and move forward with it. But as of right now, uh, the, the mayor did veto the $15 minimum wage. So there is, there's not a $15 minimum wage in Baltimore at this point, but obviously it's something that the council was very, um, okay with and it was something that they wanted to move forward with so it's going to come back um so while i was sitting at the airport i figured i'd do a little like q a session i 
went on to Twitter and I did like a mini hashtag while I was sitting here and just did like a hashtag ask an entrepreneur and tried to find some questions to answer because I think um, that's the best way to provide value is uh, through Q&A, specific questions, stuff that helps people. Um, and so the first question that came up from the hashtag uh, ask entrepreneur is uh, when times get rough, when you were coming up, what gave you motivation to keep going? Um, and for me and a lot of people, I think the answer is going to be very similar. Um, if you if you are a true entrepreneur, you really don't have another um, gear, and it's the only it's really the only thing that you know. So it's not a question of um, motivation to keep going. It's there's no other option. So that's really what it's always been for me. Um, not to mention my lowest points were getting fired from all the jobs that I worked at. So it was kind of a sign um, that I was not ever meant to really be a normal W-2 employee. Uh, the next question was from Wharton Entrepreneurs and they asked, uh, what books are required readings for entrepreneurs? Um, right off the bat, I'm going to say anything Gary Vaynerchuk would be super simple, um, anything that he's written. Um, there's another book that's really good, The Hard Things About Hard Things, I think is the correct title. Can't think of the author's name right now, but um, I think uh, that's a, a really good book. It's more startup oriented, not really too much to do with the retail business, but. Um, and there's a whole slew of finance books out there. They're just very interesting, interesting to me. Um, Big Short is another one, but uh, next question is from Millennial Leadership. As an entrepreneur, how do you empower others through your leadership? Um, when you're in a position to hire people um, and you have the privilege of being an employer, you do have the ability to empower people, but um, if you don't treat that power well, it can become a manipulative power. and. Um, and that's not good. You don't want it to turn into something like that. You want to be able to empower people by putting them in a position to succeed, putting them in a position to feel like they have um, uh, a fulfilling life and, and um, purpose. So that's, that's how I empower through my particular leadership. Um, the next question that came through was from Ego Johnson. Um, and the question was, who would the people you go to first for good advice? Um, for for me, it's always been my dad, um, it, it, and I think it will always be him first. And um, other than that, just the nature of the internet, you can find any answer that you need on the internet. Um, it's sometimes it's tough to get through the noise, but um, for the most part, you can find what you're looking for. Um, but that was all really it that came through, and I think that was. Um, a good little sample, something that we can do going forward. Um, I'm going to start heading to my gate, uh, make sure that there weren't any changes, but uh, uh, that's really it. I'm going to put out some more videos about um, each of the stores, talk a little bit. I, I guess I really haven't really talked about what I actually do, um, what, what I started. Um, I just have kind of like in passing talked about some of the stuff that's been going on, but I'll go into a more in-depth conversation. And, um, and then we can, uh, you know, have a better give a, have a better opportunity to develop some uh, dialogue and have a better um, have a better relationship in terms of providing value from a content standpoint. All right, so uh, I hope everyone has a good night. I'm gonna hop on the flight. I'm gonna sleep all day tomorrow, um, and uh, I'll see you guys later.